Orlando is a groundbreaking novel written by Virginia Woolf, first published in 1928. The book is a semi-biographical narrative blended with fantasy, focusing on the adventures of a poet who changes gender from male to female and lives for centuries without significantly aging, meeting key figures of English literary history. The story begins in the Elizabethan era with Orlando, a young nobleman who is described as sensuous and very attractive. Wolf paints a portrait of a vibrant and romantic young man with poetic ambitions. He is favored by the aging Queen Elizabeth I, who grants him a large estate and bestows on him numerous honors. During this time, Orlando tries to fit in with the Elizabethan court's culture, but his nature keeps pushing against the confines of society. As Orlando grows, his love for poetry and the arts grows alongside his uncertainties about love and life. His first romantic encounter is with a Russian princess named Sasha, who is visiting England with a delegation. Orlando falls deeply in love with Sasha, but this relationship ends in heartbreak, contributing to Orlando's growing sense of disillusionment. The narrative then leaps forward, showing Orlando's life into the 17th and 18th centuries. Throughout his life, he has a series of relationships and affairs, both fulfilling and unfulfilling. He meets various historical figures and travels to different countries. His experiences reflect on the societal, cultural, and literary changes over time. During a diplomatic mission to Constantinople in the 18th century, Orlando undergoes a significant transformation. He falls into a deep sleep and awakens to find himself physically transformed into a woman. Orlando accepts her new female identity and continues to live as a woman. Her gender transition is not just a physical change. It allows Wolf to explore the roles and restrictions placed upon women as opposed to men during the various periods Orlando lives through. Orlando, now a woman, is forced to return to England and negotiate the legal system to retain her property, which is threatened because women could not legally own property at that time. She encounters various historical and fictional characters including poets and noble figures that represent the underlying sexism and inherent challenges of a patriarchal society. As a woman, Orlando also finds love again, this time with a sea captain named Marmaduke Bonthrop Shelmerdine. They have a passionate relationship, but it does not tie them down, reflecting on the independence and modern perspective Wolf associates with her characters. Throughout the novel, Orlando engages in the act of writing. The gender transformation does not alter Orlando's dedication to poetry. After centuries of literary endeavor, Orlando finally completes a long poem she started as a young man named The Oak Tree. Approaching the 20th century, Wolfe describes the Victorian age's stifling atmosphere. Orlando, still a woman, rejects the constraints of this period, struggling against the rigid and repressed role dictated to her by society. Despite these difficulties, Orlando persists in her literary ambitions and her exploration of love and sexuality. Wolfe herself flouts conventional narrative techniques by employing a form of biography that is fluid in both time and character development. Her writing is both modernist and feminist, challenging traditional linear storytelling and offering critiques on social and gender norms. Orlando navigates different eras, adapting and embodying the characteristics of the time, all while showcasing the continuous and fluid nature of identity and experience. In the final pages of the book, Orlando has reached the early 20th century and is seemingly in her 30s. Wolf brings Orlando's journey to a close, reflective of the novel's non-linear narrative and the protagonist's transcendence of time, gender, and societal change. As Orlando continues to live, her story unravels the artificiality of societal constructs and the enduring power of individual expression and identity. By the end of Orlando, the title character is a celebrated poet, and she finally takes her place among the literary elite. The novel concludes on a note where Orlando's life, though extensive and extraordinary, still holds the potential for new experiences, reinforcing the idea that identity and existence are ongoing processes without a definitive end. Orlando is a meditation on history, gender, identity, and literature. It is also a love letter to Vita Sackville West, Virginia Woolf's close friend and lover on whom the character of Orlando is based. Woolf uses the novel to defy time and to argue for a more fluid understanding of being, 
pushing against the fixed ideas of gender and class that were prevalent in society. Ultimately, Orlando's journey is one of self-discovery and transformation that resonates through the ages. The character's myriad experiences across centuries emphasize humanity's timeless struggle with identity and the soul's indefinable essence. Through an inventive narrative that blends fact and fiction, foregrounding personal growth and societal critique, Virginia Woolf's Orlando remains a seminal work that challenges readers to think deeply about the constraints and possibilities of our own lives.